Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We are tracking Burl, which is making landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula, expected to be downgraded to a tropical storm before moving into the Gulf of Mexico early Saturday morning. Still hurricane warning officially for the eastern side of the Yucatan, tropical storm warning for the western side. And then you can see it maintains its tropical storm status, reforming into a hurricane sometime Sunday afternoon. And then what does beyond that, well, we can see now, Jeff, the cone is uh, covering the whole Texas coastline. And Beryl, currently the uh, forecast track is to make landfall somewhere there around Brownsville, at least the center of it. But, uh, it, you know, that could be up to Corpus Christi. And with this northward shift in the track that we've seen the last 24 hours, People in Texas need to keep an eye on barrel. That's the bottom line. Things are changing, and uh, we are uh, keeping track of it, of, of course. But um, this this latest change is is fairly significant, I would say, based on the trends that we've seen over the last several days. Yeah. So you know, unfortunately, barrel has has kind of fought off the shear that we've seen in the last twenty four hours or so. It is making landfall right now over the Yucatan. Um, we'll see how this inner core is disrupted uh, today as it gets further uh, across the Yucatan. I'm just move on since that image there is messed up. But yeah. um, you know the biggest the biggest issue we're potentially facing now is when does it make this right hand turn? How hard of a right hand turn does it make? And the interesting aspect of this is the orientation or the trajectory potential of the landfall on the Texas coast. So as you can see, as, as barrel kind of comes up to the coast and starts to turn to the right, you know, as it does that, the the if it turns more to the north northwest, it kind of parallels the lower Texas coast. So any any location between northeastern Mexico all the way up to Corpus Christi, even up to Rockport, Port Aransas now, you need to be paying attention and, and be prepared potentially for a hurricane impact as we get into late Sunday and Monday. You know, this definitely obviously raises the question, what about Matagorda Bay, Port O'Connor, these areas up here? You know, you need to be paying attention up here also. Obviously, uh, the further north this comes, the impacts are going to be on that eastern side. The worst of the impacts are going to be on the eastern side. So you need to be prepared and understand that, that we just don't have a really good feel on when exactly that turn happened. So yesterday, this turn was a little bit more broad and, and brought it inland across South Texas. Today, it, the turn is still there, but it's it's a little bit right up toward the coast. And, and the other thing we're seeing now was is this turn back here to the northeast um, as the, the, the tropical system connects with the trough. And so that is sort of artificially bulging the cone out, if you will, back to the east. And so because that last uh, five day forecast, I'm going to go back to the cone. So you can see the turn here to the northeast. Yeah. So if you draw out that track error at day five, that is what has caused the cone to expand here into southeast Texas. But you can see if you just kind of draw this out in time from about Port O'Connor all the way down to northeastern Mexico, we need to be paying attention to this. I and mean, this could be a situation where the hurricane comes up to the coast and just kind of moves right along the coast. Um, I cannot remember, at least in recent times, any sort of storm doing something like this. Now, it's, it's probably happened in the past at some point, but generally speaking, most of the times you see the storm hit the coast at a perpendicular angle and move on in inland. Right. This is one of these that could kind of scrape along the coast there's still potential that could come in here in northeast Mexico and move a little bit further inland, which would be the best scenario. There's still potential that it could come up to the coast and stay a little bit offshore and move further to the north. And so we're going to really have to be watching this here now over the next couple of days. Hurricane plans, you need to have your hurricane plans ready. Mid-Texas coast, lower Texas coast, and you gonna we're going to have to watch this even here on the upper Texas coast. Um, and this is what we've been showing, kind of the consensus of the modeling. You can see the latest here in the dark uh, blue does show that that uh, kind of rightward track adjustment that we've been seeing this morning. You know, and like I said, any slight deviation, I mean, we're talking, you know, tens of miles here, potentially changes the landfall point from deep south Texas to possibly up towards the mid-Texas coast or even the coastal bend. And so it's just 
the weirdness of the trajectory here of the approaching storm and how the coast kind of bends um, that is that is causing a lot of issues this morning with respect to where exactly is going to be landfall. Let me stress. It's not so important where exactly it comes in. Yes, at that location, you're going to see some of the worst conditions, but there are going to be impacts well away from where this center comes in. So even though we're still expecting landfall lower mid coast, we are going to have impacts up here on the upper Texas coast with increasing tides, possibly some gusty winds, especially Matagorda Bay area and rainfall. Rainfall is, is kind of transitioning toward potentially what could be the legacy of this as it gets inland over Texas. And one thing I really wanna stress here is over the next day or so, we're really gonna to have to see how Barrel's inner core regenerates over the Gulf of Mexico. If it regenerates fairly quickly, uh, Barrel could come up to the Texas coast stronger than what we're currently thinking right now. And so we've seen this before with hurricanes, especially in the Western Gulf of Mexico. Um, intensity guidance tends to be a little bit low. And so, you know, you need to be really paying attention down there on the lower mid-Texas coast right now, forecasting a, a minimal category one hurricane, I'd be planning for one category higher um, right now because it, it looks pretty favorable as barrel gets right up to the coast. It may kind of struggle to rebuild that inner core over the Gulf, but within that last 12, 18 mm -hmm. hours, as the storm comes right up to the coast and you get some of that frictional uh, curvature of the, co the Texas coast, it could really help barrel spin up as it gets right up to the coast. And we've seen this before. And so you really need to be paying attention and planning for, I would plan for one category higher. So potentially a category two impact on the lower or mid Texas coast. And it wouldn't totally surprise me if it was a little bit stronger than that. And so we're talking South Padre, all the way up to Kingsville, Port Mansfield, Corpus Christi, Rockport, Port Aransas. Uh, these areas really need to be watching this right now. And, and there's going to be additional impacts as we go into next week and the spreads further to the north and northeast with that track kind of bending back to the northeast over Texas. Yeah. And Jeff, we talk about sustained winds. So we use that term a lot for those of you that don't know. Sustained winds means that the wind, uh, for example, if we say tropical storm force winds, they need to be sustained at at least 39 miles per hour for one minute. So that's the definition of sustained. But outside those sustained winds, you, you can still get tropical storm wind gusts, but uh, to be officially sustained, it, they need to be at that uh, level 39 miles per hour for at least a minute. So here's the rainfall. We looked at this yesterday. Again, this is the seven day total. And we see a shift in this as well. We see heavier um, amounts now in the seven inch range and penetrating into the state of Texas a little bit more now, getting closer to the San Antonio area just east of the hill country, some pretty healthy rainfall amounts. And then in southeast Texas, those rainfall amounts in the three, four, I wouldn't be surprised to see higher amounts, five or six inches as well. This, of course, again, a model for seven days, but this will be adjusted along the way. And now in the hill country, we see some red shaded area indicating uh, one to two inches. But again, it would be surprising at all, Jeff, to see some of these amounts go up in the next day or so. Yeah, I know there's a lot of talk. There's there's uh, some similarities here to Harvey, you know, with respect to some things with track and all that. But there's a lot of talk about Harvey. This this doesn't look anything like Harvey. There, while there's a weakness over Texas, the storm is going to slow down. So you can see here on the track, the dots get uh, a little bit closer together. So the storm is going to slow down as it comes inland. Good news is that it keeps moving, um, and so we do anticipate it to move on slower. Uh, off to the north and northeast. So we are going to get heavy rain. And if this track holds, a lot of that heavy rain is going to be focused over here on the eastern side. So you have all of this moisture coming in off the Gulf. You're going to have bands coming in off the Gulf. And so a lot of this heavy rain here is going to be over south central Texas, the coastal bend into southeast Texas, and then eventually into potentially northeast Texas. You know, if this track shifts a little bit more to the east, um, the heavy rain kind of shifts a little bit more to the east. But right. Um, this is going to bring a lot of rainfall and a lot of water uh, inland over Texas. And, and potentially that may be the legacy here of Barrel. I don't want to discount the coastal impacts down here because they could be fairly significant, especially if Barrel strengthened as it comes up to the coast. But this rainfall spreading inland, um, initially flash flooding potentially, and then involving the rivers. Um, you know, unlike just moving into Mexico and you in, impact some area, this is this is potentially moving up the river. So you kind of 
uh, are going to have to drain all this inland water as this gets further and further inland. So this is going to be obviously redefined over the next couple of days as we get a better handle on this. I, I suspect some of these numbers are probably going to go up, potentially even go up significantly. Um, so do not sleep on the inland flood threat here over south central, uh, central and southeast Texas as we get into uh, next week. And this will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, well after Barrow makes landfall and slows down and kind of comes up into this fashion. So we, we really are going to have to pay attention here uh, over the next couple of days to what the impacts look like over the state of Texas. Yeah. And here are the key messages, the latest key messages from the National Hurricane Center. Of course, making landfall right now on the Yucatan Peninsula, they're under a hurricane warning. Then number two, we get into Texas and the impacts for Texas and northeastern Mexico. Interest in these areas should closely monitor the progress of barrel. I think that's the key message right there. Monitor the progress because as we just saw last night, pretty significant shift in the track. Well, that's why it's good to monitor this on a daily basis. And then number three, rip currents. There are dangerous rip currents. And I think that is probably the first impact if you're on the coast right now, say you're out uh, on the beach for the holiday weekend. I know a lot of folks still are, are uh, out there from the holiday weekend and those rip currents are dangerous. They're very difficult to detect and no human being can swim against a rip current. So uh, keep that in mind if you are along the beach. Jeff, thank you very much. Good stuff as always. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. And I'd like to remind you that you can subscribe to the Weather Insights podcast by clicking on the link. Of course, please share it with friends and family so they can stay informed on the latest in the tropics. And we'll see you on the next Weather Insights podcast.